The Macan is the people's Porsche, the model to convert the SUV cynics, and an SUV with the soul and the engineering of a sports car. You might expect it to be fast and family friendly. More of a surprise is that it's rewarding and, with the right spec, very nearly race ready in its responses. Yet it'll comfortably take you off road, deal with the school run, and cruise down to Chamonix. It sets the ultimate benchmark for just how dynamic the handling of an SUV can be, and it's very special indeed. Lots of unlikely models have been described as sports cars over the years. It's always been hard, though, to imagine an SUV in that way. Or at least it was until the launch of this model, the Porsche Macan in 2014. This car redefined the way an SUV could drive, and four years into its production cycle, the Zuffenhauser maker substantially upgraded it to create the contender that we're going to look at here. Over 350,000 Macans have been sold by the time this improved model arrived in the autumn of 2018, tasked with continuing a success story that saw the original version account for nearly half of its maker's entire sales volume in our market. But that's quite an ask, given that this facelifted range lacks the diesel engine that previously accounted for over 40% of the Macan's European sales mix. Nor has that void been filled by a plug-in hybrid variant, as it has been in the last larger KN models lineup. Instead, in an all-petrol range, the old entry-level X-Golf GTI 2-litre turbo unit has been moved to centre stage, uh, slotting in below two new V6s, a 3-litre unit borrowed from the EKN and a 2.9-litre twin-turbo borrowed from top Audi RS models for the potent Macan Turbo. Otherwise, here the updates are subtle, minor styling changes, upgraded cabin entertainment, a range of fresh options and a series of dynamic tweaks aimed at further underlining this contender's claim to be the sports car of the SUV segment. Of all brands, Porsche should know just what a claim that is to make about a model that weighs nearly two tonnes, is over 1.6 metres in height and has to be engineered to tackle the Rubicon Trail as well as the racetrack. Now, if you've driven the company's larger KN SUV, you'll know that an awful lot is possible with this kind of car, but inevitably, there are always limits. With the Macan, Porsche was always determined to stretch them and to create the ultimate multitasker. A car as ready for the circuit as it would be for a skiing trip, classy enough for the streets of Monte Carlo, soundly sensible on the school run, quietly capable on the rough stuff and potentially manic around Monza. The company is certainly well placed to create such a thing, claiming the whole sporting all-wheel drive car concept as its own invention. Back in 1900, Ferdinand Porsche designed the Lona Porsche racing model with its four electric wheel hub motors. By 1947, the brand was going further, developing a supercharged 12-cylinder Type 360 Cistalia Grand Prix racer that introduced the concept of full four-wheel drive. For all that though, the Stuttgart maker has never made a car quite like this prior to this model's original arrival. Perhaps that's why a decade ago, at the beginning of Macan development, it initially turned to Volkswagen Group partner Audi with the early idea of basing this car on that company's similarly sized Q5. It wasn't long into the development process though before Porsche decided it knew better. It alone could create the kind of mid-sized sporting SUV that models like the Q5, Range Rovers Evoque and the BMW X4 could never be. So almost everything was reinvented, almost everything was reimagined, almost everything was different, as this car still is from just about everything else in its segment. So let's put it to the test. So what might the self-proclaimed sports car of SUVs be like to drive? Well, in answer, we'd say that Porsche is certainly right about one thing. This Macan is certainly very different from any other model of this kind that we've seen to date. To drive, it's not quite like a premium, powerful all-wheel drive hot hatch, say a Volkswagen Golf R or an Audi S3, but it is closer to that than the cars that you might think were more obvious rivals, Range Rovers Evoque, uh, Audi's Q5, or even BMW's X4. 
Uh, that change is significant. Independent track tests have seen the top turbo version of this car uh, record circuit lap times only a fraction slower than its 718 Cayman stablemate. Try doing that in any other SUV. Now with this in mind, you can begin to see why during the Macan's original development, Porsche's engineers were so disinterested in simply rebadging the Audi Q5 that was always supposed to form the development basis for this car. No matter what you do to a Q5, and Audi has certainly tried hard with its SQ5 variant, it's never going to be any kind of sports car. To create the Macan, stiffer, sharper and faster reacting underpinnings were needed. Um, take the four-wheel drive system. The Audi Quattro setup that could easily have been used is mechanical, and from Porsche's perspective, it doesn't react quickly enough. The PTM, the Porsche Traction Management Setup, in contrast, is electronic and in less than a blink of an eye can switch up to 100% of torque from front to rear. It's one of the key reasons why this car is so responsive. Of course, there are plenty of others with many of the engineering elements that make this car so great, enhanced in small but significant ways to create the updated model that we're trying here. Porsche has replaced the steel front suspension struts of the pre-facelift version with lighter aluminium ones to further improve steering feedback and ride comfort. Uh, the anti-roll bar rates have been revised for a better handling balance and the front brake discs and the brake pedal have been redesigned for improved stopping power and pedal feel. There are also narrower front tyres to improve corner turning and as before, different sized wheels front and back so as to put more rubber on the road at the rear end. Now, I'll tell you all this because the salesperson at your local Porsche center probably won't. They'll be keen instead to concentrate on the higher profile changes made here. Many of them relate to what now lies beneath the bonnet. There are all new V6s further up the range, a 354HP 3-litre unit from the KN for the Macan S and a twin-turbo 434HP 2.9-litre engine from the KN S uh, for the Macan Turbo. Arguably uh, more important, though, is the power plant that will account for the majority of sales, the entry-level 2-litre turbo 4-cylinder unit we're trying here, and that's tasked with filling the vast void in the range left by the the deletion of diesel power from the model lineup. With the larger KN, the gap's been largely filled by a plug-in hybrid variant, uh, engineering that this current Macan's aging platform wasn't designed to accommodate. So the two litre green pump engine has been forced into centre stage. And this familiar Volkswagen Group sourced unit is a versatile one used in its current EA888 series form to put out a fairly manic 306 HP in the Golf R, but a more modest 245 HP and a Golf GTI performance, this lower output level being the one chosen for use in this Macan. Surprisingly so, given that this Porsche must lug about half a tonne more curb weight about than its VW hatch cousin. You'd think that might blunt the car's performance somewhat, and sure enough, it does feel a touch gutless at first, but only until you realise that, rather unusually, this is a turbo engine that has to be revved out to do its best work. Peak power isn't actually delivered until you get to 5,000 revs, by which time, if you've stormed off from rest, 62 miles an hour will be flashing by. Uh, the official sprint time is 6.7 seconds, which you can reduce by a couple of tenths by opting for the optional Sport Chrono Pack. This adds a launch control system to the reprogrammed 7-speed paddle shift PDK auto gearbox that all Macans must have. Uh, top speed, that is 139 miles an hour. Now, most of the magazines will tell you to ignore that engine and find the relatively small premium necessary to upgrade yourself to the V6 Macan S, which improves the standard model performance figures to 5.3 seconds and 157 miles an hour. We're not so sure. Rather counterintuitively, the four-cylinder unit uh, seems to us hourly more engaging than that 3-litre 6, and the fact that it's a substantial 70 kilos lighter means the car's a little more agile and lighter on its feet. Yes, you are still over 100 HP down on power with the base model, which of course will make you slower down the straights. But when you reach the corners, you'll be able to brake later and turn quicker, which on fast point-to-point -point roads makes it slightly easier to find a driving rhythm.
Ultimately though, the differences between these two cool variants are small and in either version of this Porsche, the fizzing feedback that you get through the 911 style steering wheel and the remarkable lack of lean through each bend together give you such confidence that you can attack each turn almost as hard as you want. You simply set up for the bend, turn in, plant your foot and power through in a way that'll be further enhanced if you fitted the car out with the brand's optional PTB Plus, Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus system. Now this works through the twisty stuff to counter both understeer and wheel spin by lightly micro braking whichever front wheel is threatening to lose grip. As a result, the car's kept planted through the tightest turn and you're fired on from bend to bend. If you're driving like this, then you'll certainly want to have activated this center console sport button. This quickens the throttle response, it adds a sportier engine note, and it speeds up the gear shift timings. Uh, now, should you have opted for the sport chrono package that we mentioned earlier, a more effective tool is provided in the shape of a central sport response button, which is embedded in a steering wheel dial. Press that, and for 20 seconds, you'll get a short-term blast of engine response, which will be really useful in a tight overtaking maneuver. Now talking of drive settings, you'll get three of those, Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus, if you choose either of the two optional suspension configurations. The first of these embellishes the standard passive setup with PASM, that's Porsche Active Suspension Management Adaptive Damping. Your other option is full air suspension, and that's still a rare feature in the mid-sized SUV segment. It's a self-leveling setup. One of the advantages of that is that there's a handy button in the luggage compartment which can lower the rear of the car by 50 millimeters if you have heavy items to get in and out. As for the road going advantages, well, an air sprung Macan will sit 15 millimeters closer to the ground than a steel sprung one in its normal setting. And that's one of three settings that the driver can choose. For sporty driving, requiring a lower center of gravity, you can go 10 millimeters lower than the normal benchmark by choosing the low mode. Or if you're going off the beaten track, you can push the car 40 millimeters higher than normal by selecting the high level one. Oh yes, off-road driving. Well, despite encouraging looking approach and departure angles of 24.8 degrees and 23.6 degrees and a ramp angle of 16.9 degrees, you wouldn't expect this to be much of a Macan strength, uh, which to be fair, it probably wouldn't be without the air sprung setup that we just mentioned. Uh, this makes all the difference. It ups the potential ground clearance from the standard 205 mils to as much as 230 mils. Uh, so you can make the most of this. There is now a downloadable off-road precision app which gives Macan drivers the chance to document, to analyze and even to film the off-road journeys that they'll almost certainly never take. More useful is the off-road mode that works at up to 50 miles an hour and is activated by pushing another center console button. This switches all the relevant systems, things like gear shift speeds, uh, clutch pre-tensioning, throttle response and torque split uh, to a traction orientated off-road program. Now if you have air suspension fitted, it'll automatically adjust your ride height to suit the terrain level. If you're descending a steep slope, then there's also the option of activating the PHC. That's the Porsche Hill Control System. It's a copy of Land Rover's Hill Descent Control setup in the way that it can automatically keep your speed constant down slippery inclines. But of course, you're about as likely to see a Macan being used seriously off-road as you are to see an elephant flying over your house. More likely alternative habitats for this car when it's not being thrown about on twisting secondaries lie with congested highways and the urban commute. Both environments it'll be better equipped to conquer if you specify this revised model's new traffic jam assist setup, uh, which can also take over the steering and throttle duties in slow moving traffic at up to 40 miles an hour. That's about as close as this Porsche currently gets to any degree of autonomous driving, and we can't help hoping that it's as close as this car will ever get to such a state. A Macan is a, it's a driver's car. It always has been, and it always should be.
It's no secret that Porsche has struggled since the turn of the century to translate its brand values into the styling of an SUV. With the original Macan, though, the visual balance of sports car and crossover was much better resolved. So much so, in fact, that the brand has clearly been reticent about changing things too much when it came to this improved model, feeling confident enough to restrict visual tinkering to stylistic updates that could be achieved without the huge retooling costs required for alterations to the basic body in white. Which is fine because market evidence suggests that the Macan's core customers like this car very much as it always was. Familiar brand styling cues are plentiful and they're far less contrived than used to be the case with larger Porsche SUVs, with references not only to the Cayenne and the 911, but also to the Stuttgart makers' supercars, past and present. Uh, take the distinctive wraparound clamshell bonnet, unique in this segment, fashioned from pure aluminium and stretching through to the wheel arches while aiming to create the same kind of broad and powerful front end presence which uh, characterized Porsche's Le Mans winning 917 race machine. You would really need to see old and new Macar models together to appreciate the changes made to this updated model, but actually there are plenty, perhaps the most significant one being the adoption of these sleeker full LED headlights, which incorporate the four LED ice cube style design motif, which is characteristically Porsche. Uh, these ribbed corner cutouts remain, but they've been redesigned with more overtly vertical outer frames. Not much has changed in profile apart from restyled wheels which vary in size from 18 inches to the optional 21 inch rims we have here. The panel works very Porsche with design creases accentuating the broad sculpted wings. Uh, the idea being that from this angle every muscle appears to be flexed like a predator ready to pounce. That's aided by the way that in an effort to improve stability and traction this Macan gets wider tyres at the rear just like the brand's 911 model. As before, you get these smart side blades along the flanks, uh, reminiscent of those in the brand's exotic 918 hybrid hypercar, and here featuring an optional high gloss black finish. And the roof line slopes uh, distinctively down towards the rear in a sports car style contour, which aids the slippery shape. In Stuttgart, they call this the Porsche fly line. It's the rear perspective that most clearly identifies this as an updated version of stylist Michael Meyer's original design though, thanks to the adoption of the kind of smart three-part LED light panel that's lately been characterized in the brand's other models. It connects the two tail light clusters and it showcases Porsche lettering in three-dimensional script, which is almost indecipherable when the LEDs are lit and the whole thing illuminates like a lightsaber as you lock the car at night. Otherwise, uh, things are much as before, with Mauer's original idea having been to create a car that looks low, wide and intimate with the road. And the style is slender at the top, but then widens into the broad shoulders that sit above the back wheels. This is apparently an homage to the brand's iconic 911 model. As usual though, what's more important is what lies underneath the aesthetics and what lies beneath them, barstool experts will doubtless tell you, are the underpinnings of a much humbler Audi Q5, the shortcut that Porsche supposedly used in creating the original version of this model. Don't believe it. Yes, the Macan does borrow about 30% of its components from the old first generation Q5, mainly the front and rear differentials and the suspension arms, but that's to be expected given Porsche's current day positioning as part of the Volkswagen Group. All the stuff which really matters though is different. Uh, this car is longer, it's lower and wider than its Audi cousin, and every body panel is unique, as is the basic platform, the four wheel drive system, and much of the engine wear. The Macan was certainly always very different at the wheel, not only from a Q5, but from every other SUV rival. Is it still? Absolutely. Once the door thunks shut and you take a look around, the feeling you get is less like that of a sporting SUV and more like what you'd experience in a thoroughbred sports estate, uh, say a Mercedes AMG C63. Now the whole soul of a sports car thing might be a difficult concept to swallow from the outside, but you feel it keenly here at the wheel. And that's thanks to the way that this low set seat and this high center console create such a cockpit style feel. That's something that 
it'll be further emphasized if you paid the extra for this GT sport steering wheel lifted directly from the 911 and featuring the beautifully positioned paddle shifters for the PDK Auto gearbox that all Macar models must have. For all these reasons, we like this cabin very much. But if we're honest, uh, there's also much about it that reminds us of the older provenance of this design. Now, in this era and at this price point, it now seems a little strange to be staring through the wheel at a predominantly analog instrument cluster and putting the car-shaped ignition key into a slot rather than using a push-button start. And of course, the almost endless rows of switches on this center console here are very yesteryear in an era where button functions are usually replaced by infotainment screen options. If this had been a completely new Macan design rather than a facelift, this car would have received the shiny black console from the brand's current KN and Panamera models with its haptic touch functionality. Uh, we're actually rather glad it hasn't got that somewhat confusing setup, but we're pleased that a 10.9 inch version of the much improved PCM, that's Porsche Communications Management Center Dash touchscreen from those two models has made it here to replace the tiny seven inch monitor that McCann owners were previously stuck with. This display is so large that the fascia vents have had to be redesigned and positioned just below, but it was worth the effort for extra usability, which includes a much improved voice control system. Uh, using predefined tiles, users can easily create a home screen with their preferred functions and then quickly switch them about using the usual pinch and swipe technology, all the while enjoying crystal clear graphics that only Mercedes can match. It is annoying though that uh, this setup doesn't come with a kind of um, separate controller down by the gear stick that many rivals in this segment do provide. Now that is a problem if like us, you struggle to get to grips with voice control. Um, various shortcut buttons uh, ahead of the gear stick certainly help to more easily access the system's functionality. But once you've activated them, you often still have to stab away at the touchscreen to try to find what you want. A standard part of the PCM setup these days is the brand's Connect Plus module, which gives you online navigation, 4G LTE phone compatibility, uh, wireless internet access, a Porsche vehicle tracking system, and a wide range of compatible apps, including remote services, and one that, amongst other things, allows you to send and to receive journey destinations. Um, that Porsche Connect app is compatible with Apple and Android phones, but unfortunately, the PCM setup integrated smartphone mirroring capability isn't. So if you can't use Apple CarPlay, you're going to be a bit stuck. Uh, you do get a standard 10-speaker hi-fi sound system with digital sound processing, but the output's limited to 150 watts. More familiar to Porsche people will be the three instrument tube binnacle that you view through this three spoke wheel with the rev counter as usual with this brand, assuming central pride of place. Uh, to its right, what you might at first assume to be a supplementary dial is in fact a 4.8 inch color screen which displays phone, audio and trip computer readouts. But more colorfully, it can also bring sat nav mapping directly into your line of sight. Uh, now, if you have ticked the box for the optional sport chrono package that we've uh, done without here there is a lovely analog and digital stopwatch on top of the dash and the quality of the trim very much suits a car of this order with lovely leathers perfect plastics and lovely stitching for the dash top and the door pulls which all complements the granite like build quality from the Leipzig factory uh, there is astonishing attention to detail too for example the uh, supporting plate and guide rails the front arm are fashioned from high-tech magnesium. There are a few issues though. You have to shell out a four-figure sum for an optional comfort package if you want these front seats fitted with lumbar support and without it they lack lower back support. Uh, there is a bit of a bulge in the transmission tunnel which skews your left leg over a little and although frontward visibility is better than you'd expect given the low set positioning here, uh, the high rear window compromises your rearward vision so it's just as well that all-round parking sensors 
filters are standard. Uh, what else? Well, there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses here. Uh, premium segment etiquette, which usually insists on a lid for this uh, twin cup holder compartment between the seats. That's been ignored. And this uh, 12 volt socket here that sits just in front has been positioned so that anything you plug into that will leave a wire dangling across the switches nearby. Uh, the door bins won't quite take a one litre bottle and this stowage box further back between the seats here is a bit shallow, although it does usefully incorporate uh, SIM, SD card and twin USB ports, plus there's a slot for your phone. Uh, the glove box can be called and there is a ticket clip here on the driver's sun visor. Okay, time to see how this model stacks up in the rear. Now, it's an issue uh, that's of greater importance than you might at first think, given that a significant number of potential buyers, Porsche thinks, will be people considering this car as a more dynamic alternative to a larger but similarly priced sporting SUV from the next class up, maybe a Range Rover Sport or a BMW X5. Now, this is one of the main reasons why the brand didn't introduce this Macan model line sooner. There was an understandable fear that it would steal sales from the larger KN. So if you are the sort of family person who might otherwise choose a big luxury SUV with sporting pretensions, will your family castigate you for cramming them into a Macan? Probably not. Uh, you'd certainly notice a bit less space for sure, but head and knee room's acceptable, helped by these scalloped seat backs. Three adults could certainly fit for short to medium journeys, provided the unfortunate middle seat occupant didn't mind splaying their legs around this extremely high centre transmission tunnel. Uh, rear cabin space is one area in which this car is pretty much the same as an Audi Q5, uh, which isn't surprising given that its wheelbase is identical. Well, nearly identical anyway. Uh, unfortunately, Macan buyers don't get that car's sliding rear bench, and that's something that would have been a real boon here, and you can't recline these seat backs either. So you'll have to shelve thoughts of seating configurability and instead content yourself with admiring the quality. Uh, things like the stitched leather door pulls, the piano black door panels and the smart climate adjustability that's built into the twin central vents. Porsche hasn't forgotten to provide USB points back here and there are overhead reading lights plus a couple of cup holders in this central armrest here. Uh, it does seem a bit mean to charge for seat back pockets though. OK, let's take a look out back where the standard automatically operable rear tailgate rises to reveal a 500 litre cargo bay. Uh, now the sloping rear end means that this is a 50 litre reduction on what you get in a comparable Audi Q5 and it'll certainly be a lot less than you're used to if you're downsizing from one of the larger sporting SUVs we just mentioned. But the area provided is usually square shaped and it'll easily accommodate a couple of really large suitcases if you need to. Uh, you might struggle a bit to get them in though. This rather impractical decorative shiny stainless steel plate here highlights what is quite a high loading lip, although that'll be less of an issue if you've paid extra for air suspension, which will allow you to lower the rear end by 50 millimeters if you have heavy items to get in and out. Uh, there is a useful underfloor compartment, although if wisely you pay extra for a spare wheel, most of that space will be taken up. Uh, Porsche hasn't forgotten to include a 12 volt socket back here and you get the usual bag hook and four tie down points, plus this netted area here on the right. If you need to take longer items, you'll be glad that the rear backrest folds in a useful 40-20-40 split, which means you can poke through things like skis without disturbing uh, your rear seat passengers. Uh, push the rear bench completely forward and uh, 1500 litre capacity is freed up. That is class competitive if your point of comparison is with Audi Q5 segment mid-sized SUVs. Surprisingly, there's not much of a price differential between the two Macan variants that account for most sales within a model line that these days is all petrol powered. Uh, the range kicks off with this standard Macan variant, which uses a 245 HP, two litre, four cylinder power plant, and from launch was priced from just under 46,500 pounds. Porsche hopes that this will be the version of choice for those who previously preferred a diesel powered derivative. Well, perhaps uh, less than two and a half thousand pounds more is 
required to progress from here to the Macan S with its 354 HP 3 litre V6. As is used in this segment, all variants in the range get auto transmission and that's a seven speed PDK setup with steering wheel paddle shifters. If you want to go faster, you can talk to your Porsche Center about even more powerful variants like the GTS. Plus, at the top of the range, there are the Turbo and Turbo S models, which use a lighter, more reactive 2.9 litre V6. By that point, though, you'll find this car seriously overlapping into the kind of pricing that could also buy you the brand's larger KN SUV, uh, the entry level version of which shares the same 3 litre V6 using the Macan S and costs only around £7,000 more. Onto the value proposition that Porsche's pricing represents and the competition this car faces. Now in rough terms, if you think in terms of a Macan being a mid-sized SUV pitched at full-sized SUV pricing, you won't be too far out. Uh, the mid-sized models you might normally think you'd rank against it, comparable versions of cars like Alfa Romeo Stelvio, uh, the Jaguar F-Pace or an upper spec Range Rover Evoque are all around £10,000 less. Uh, we think it less likely that a potential Macan buyer would consider even sportily trimmed versions of less dynamically inclined models in the class like the Audi Q5 and the Mercedes GLC or the Volvo XC60 but the same applies there too. Basically, there aren't going to be that many Macans leaving the showroom for much less than £50,000. And for that, you can start thinking about lower order versions of large segment luxury SUVs like BMW's X5 and the Mercedes GLE. Although, again, that is unlikely because they don't have the agility and the handling purity of a Macan. A much closer match can be found with a car priced almost exactly against this Porsche, the Range Rover Velar. Now, that solely held product is slightly more spacious and it's better off road, but it's rather less agile and rewarding so you're cool if you want other credible alternatives and you happen to be looking at the Macan S we'd point you towards three particular V6 rivals all priced similarly and uh, offering around 350 horsepower for the same money as the V6 engine version of this Porsche there's the BMW X4 M40i and for only around £3,000 more you could have either a Mercedes AMG GLC 43 or the 3 litre V6 petrol version of the Maserati Levante but we think that all three of those cars would struggle to keep a well well-driven Macan in sight at speed on a twisty road. All of which is good news if it's the Porsche key fob you really want. And if so, you'll be needing to know just how generous the brand's been when it comes to the standard spec. Now, have compromises been made in order to keep Macan prices affordable? Well, not really. All variants get a sport option which sharpens throttle response and an off-road button that tailors drive characteristics to better suit off-tarmac trails. Uh, beyond that, standard Macan features include fill LED headlamps, 18-inch alloy wheels and automatic tailgate, power folding heated mirrors, auto headlamps and wipers, uh, front and rear parking sensors and an alarm. Inside, there are comfort spec seats trimmed in a combination of leatherette and Alcantara and featuring eight-way electrical adjustment on the driver's side. Uh, there's also three-zone automatic climate control, a pollen filter and cruise control with a speed limiter. Uh, the multifunction steering wheel has buttons that activate the Porsche communication management infotainment setup. Now, that's a 10.9-inch screen, which comes complete with navigation, uh, with voice control, internet capability, Bluetooth phone connectivity and a 10 speaker 150 watt DAB hi-fi audio system. Uh, there is standard Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring although not Android Auto and there's an included Connect Plus module with LTE and 4G phone connectivity, Wi-Fi capability and an integrated SIM card. You get some really clever connectivity technology too. There are Car Finder and Porsche Vehicle Tracking System Plus services that'll let you know where your Macan is at all times. And a downloadable Porsche Connect app for Apple and Android phones uh, gives you a wide variety of digital features and services. That includes a remote vehicle status feature via which you'll be able to check vital data such as door locking and fuel range from your phone. Uh, the navigation system is able to process so-called 
so-called swarm data via its risk radar service, uh, which anonymously captures data about traffic and road conditions from vehicles with relevant equipment. Now, that could mean that your Macan will know in advance about things like fog, skidding risks and road accidents, adapting its systems and its navigational inputs accordingly. Uh, there are also 20 further apps available for this car. We like the Finder app that allows you to find destinations of almost any kind in seconds. Uh, a covered car park rather than an open one, for example, if it's pouring down and you don't want to step out into the rain. Uh, then there's uh, the off-road precision app, uh, which provides you with helpful tips for driving off-road. As you'd expect, though, there are plenty of extra cost features, which we'll try to guide you through now. Uh, arguably the most important thing to sort out on your Macan is the suspension. Uh, as an alternative to the standard passive damping, you can specify the brand's excellent PASM, that's Porsche Active Suspension Management System, and that offers comfort, sport and sport plus chassis settings to vary the ride from cosseting to clinically precise. Or you can go further and opt for adaptive air suspension, which offers the same selectable modes and takes ride comfort up another level. Plus, the full air suspension drops the car at speed, can raise it off-road and provides a chance to lower the boot level for easier luggage loading. The other optional dynamic extra that many customers tend to add is PTV Plus, the Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus package that works through the twisty stuff to counter both understeer and wheel spin by lightly micro braking whichever front wheel is threatening to lose grip. PTV Plus also delivers a perceptible gain in traction when you're accelerating out of tight bends by locking the differential. Uh, now, if you're the sort of person who's likely to appreciate that, you'll probably also want to tick the box for the Sport Chrono package, which costs around uh, 800 pounds or so more, and it'll be a feature that many buyers will be looking for when the time comes to sell this car on. It gives you launch control for F1 style getaways, a dash top stopwatch, and a steering wheel mounted mode switch for the various driving settings, in the center of which is a sport response button that gives you a short term blast of engine response. And that'll be very useful in tight overtaking maneuvers. We would also want the sports exhaust system, and if we were urban-based, we'd also consider the Power Steering Plus package, and that reduces steering effort when you're manoeuvring and at low speeds. Lighting is another area that you might want to embellish. Add in the PDLS Porsche dynamic light system to the full LED headlamps and you'll get cornering lights and the car will automatically switch between high and low beams at night. Uh, the further PDLS Plus package additionally dynamically adapts the main beam function and includes the junction light function too. And talking of new features, uh, there's now the option for Macan buyers to add in a heated windscreen, uh, the GT Sport steering wheel from the 911, and an ionizer that reduces germs and other pollutants from the airflow. Uh, we'd want to think about the audio system too, possibly in terms of an upgrade to the 14 speaker, 665 watt Bose setup, but ideally to the 1000 watt Burmester 16 speaker setup, although that does cost the best part of three and a half thousand pounds. Another important option is the laminated glass with enhanced thermal and noise insulation package, which blocks almost 100% of harmful UV rays from entering the cabin. Uh, the optional rear side window sun blinds will also help there, and you can specify a two-part panoramic glass roof. You may well also want a Porsche entry and drive keyless entry, which includes an ignition starter switch. Uh, there is also an optional reversing camera, or you could go further and get the park assist with surround view package. Now that gives you an infotainment screen bird's eye view from four individual cameras to help with parking and manoeuvring. As for going further, well, let's start with customization, quite a lot of which has been applied to this particular test car. The sport design package we have here is available either with or without these unique side skirts and includes a bespoke front and rear apron design with these elements along with the roof spoiler and the rear midsection all finished in body color. Uh, you can order the side skirts separately and if desired, all these elements can be alternatively finished in high gloss black paint. Uh, that high gloss black finish can also 
is here. B optionally applied to the door handles, to the side window trims and the side flank uh, side blades. Uh, the side window trim can also be specified in aluminium and the side blades can also be finished in carbon, in silver or body colour as an alternative to the standard lava black finish. Uh, more dark themed optional exterior elements include rear privacy glass and the tint that's been applied to this car's LED tail light strip. The optional sports tailpipes can be finished in black and you might additionally want the bespoke sport design mirrors which can be specified in auto dimming form. The fuel filler cap can have an aluminium look finish and the rear apron can be had with the bespoke painted midsection. You're probably going to want to upgrade the wheels too. Uh, there are larger 19, 20 or 21 inch rim options. We've got the 21 inch Sport Classic satin platinum rims here. As an option the Porsche Crest can be added into the wheel centers and you can even have your vehicle key painted and supplied in a leather pouch. Uh, bear in mind that you're almost certainly going to have to pay extra for your choice of paintwork. Um, straightforward black or white shades are the only ones that come as standard. Um, many buyers choose from the range of optional metallic shades. Now we have Mamba green metallic here but there are also three further special colors if you're happy to spend more. For the inside there are of course lots of extra cost seat trimming options. You can obviously go for full leather upholstery in a variety of colors but here we've got the black leather package with partial leather seats that have added heating up front. It is annoying that you don't get lumbar support unless you pay over a thousand pounds more for the 14-way electric front seat package which includes memory settings uh, but if you're going to stretch to that well you might as well pay a fraction more and get yourself the uh, adaptive sports seat seats with 18-way power adjustment. Now, the front seats can be ordered with cooled ventilation and both the rear seats and the steering wheel can be heated on request. Um, you can also add a compass display um, on the dashboard and there's also a smoking package if you haven't yet kicked the habit. Whatever your decision, don't forget to set it all off with the comfort lighting package. Now that bathes the whole interior in a delicious LED nighttime glow. As for options when it comes to interior decor, well, there are various extra cost interior packages that can coat the dash and the doors in either leather, dark walnut, anthracite chestnut, brushed aluminium or carbon fiber. Uh, we like the Alcantara trimming that can be added to the roof lining or the interior grab handles. And the steering wheel can be finished in Alcantara, in carbon fiber, in dark walnut or anthracite chestnut. The door sill guards can be carbon or aluminium trimmed, illuminated and personalized with a logo on request. Uh, the PDK gear selector can be trimmed in aluminium and or you can add extra piano black finish trimming around the interior as is cased with this test car. One of the nice things about not having a fully digitalized instrument cluster is that you can bespoke color the dials, in this case in either beige, red or white, with the same colors available to you if you have the central stopwatch dials that come with that sport chrono pack. Uh, the seat belts, they can be had in espresso, beige, red or a choice of greys. The front and rear seats, they can have an embossed Porsche crest and that crest can also be embossed onto the front center console arm rest or a Macan model logo if you prefer that. Personalized leather edged floor mats are available and you can add stitched leather to the steering column casing, uh, the sun visors and the interior grab handles. If you want something even more bespoke then you'll also be able to order it through the Porsche exclusive program. As for practical stuff, well, you might want to look at either stainless steel skid plates or running boards. Uh, we'd want the larger 75 litre fuel tank and you can also specify various car covers, loading seal protection film, a cool bag and a fire extinguisher. As you expect, there's the option of an electrically extending tow bar and you can add aluminium roof rails in silver, matte or black as part of a roof transport system. On that subject, you can specify various sizes of roof box, a bicycle rack, a racing bike carrier and a holder for skis and snowboards. 
Uh, for the inside, you might want all-weather floor mats or a rear footrest. An optional storage package gives you a storage compartment under the front seats, front seat back storage pockets, and a storage net for the boot. Now, for that cargo area, we'd want the load space management system, which enables you to partition the luggage space to suit your needs. Now, as part of this, items are held in place by a rail system with a slide adjustable telescopic rod, a strap roller, and four variable lashing eyelets. Plus there's a reversible boot mat that you can flip over for muddy boots. Uh, that latter feature can be personalised and ordered separately. If money really is no object though, there's a bespoke leather luggage set offered um, if you've got over £5,000 to spend on that. On to safety. Now, the Macan is the only Porsche to ever have been tested by Euro NCAP. It gained a five-star result from that organization at original launch, but it wouldn't get that now if it was tested because, rather incredibly for a car this price, there's no sort of autonomous braking system fitted to standard, which isn't really acceptable in this day and age. You only get it if you pay extra for an improved adaptive cruise control system, which can slow the car right down to a stop and start you off again. Uh, you can embellish the that adaptive cruise control with Porsche's traffic jam assist setup and that can also take over the steering in slow moving traffic which might make your urban commute a bit easier. Uh, that is the closest that the Macan currently gets to any kind of autonomous driving capability. We're equally surprised to find other common camera safety systems relegated to the options list. Things like Lane Keep Assist, which stops you from drifting over delineating lines on the highway. Uh, lane Change Assist, which stops you from dangerously pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And a speed limit indicator, which pictures speed signs and displays them on the dash. Of course, all the more conventional stuff is well covered. Uh, every Macan features the POSIP, Porsche Side Impact Protection System, which builds in side impact protection elements into the doors and includes thorax airbags integrated into the side bolster of each front seat. Uh, there are also twin front side and curtain airbags, plus a knee bag for the driver. Further rear side bags are optional. Both outer rear chairs have ice fix mounts and of course, all models feature ABS anti-lock brakes. Uh, PTM, Porsche traction management, traction control, tyre pressure monitoring and an active bonnet that will reduce pedestrian injuries should you hit someone. Uh, there is also PHC, Porsche hill control to ease you down slippery slopes. Porsche has plenty of electrified powertrain technology, but it's saving most of that for the next generation version of this car, which will be built on a platform capable of sustaining full electric mobility. That's the sort of thing that was a pipe dream when the chassis of this current Macan was designed well over a decade ago. So there are limitations here that Porsche's more recently designed larger models don't have. That shouldn't concern a typical Macan buyer very much. Um, that's someone who's more likely to be bothered about potent performance than uh, pretentious plugging in. Given that 40% of European sales of the original version of this car went to diesel variants, you can only admire the boldness of Zuffenhausen's decision to dump diesel power for this revised model. Uh, the company thinks that most black pump fueled refugees will switch to the entry level four cylinder two litre petrol engine that we're trying here. Uh, that does seem to us a touch hopeful. The last time we tested a Macan diesel, its combined cycle fuel economy was quoted at 46.3 mpg. This 2-litre petrol model uh, officially achieves up to 28.2 mpg. That's a figure admittedly compiled using stricter WLTP cycle criteria, but still a way away from what you get from any diesel, however you look at it. Porsche, like its rival, still uses figures from the old NEDC cycle for CO2 emissions, which for this 2-litre variant are rated at 185 grams per kilometre. Still, you can be pretty sure that this four-cylinder unit is as efficient as a power plant of this size is ever going to get. Uh, it's been tweaked in recent times to comply with the latest Euro 6D temp emissions regulations, and that's meant the need for the addition of a particulate filter. Uh, there is also demand-based coolant pump control, which helps the engine and the catalytic converters reach their optimum operating temperatures more quickly. Uh, there is a revised auto start-stop system that now switches off the engine as you coast to a stop uh, rather than when you actually come to a halt. 
by the way, in quoting fuel figures, we've used the phrase up to because the larger wheel rim sizes that many owners will want will have an effect on those returns, and that could be up to around 5%. Porsche is also keen to remind us that the 3.0-litre V6 engine of the Macan S is a much more efficient thing than the engine of that size that was fitted to the original version of this car. It gets two particulate filters, plus it's lighter and more efficient thanks to the location of the mono-turbocharger in the engine's inner V. As a result, the combined economy isn't hugely worse than that of the four-cylinder variant. It's quoted at up to 25.7 mpg. The CO2 return is reckoned to be 204 grams per kilometre. All of which is about the most you can expect, given that the typical Macan weighs about 1.9 tonnes. Uh, that's despite the use of aluminium body panels that Porsche says pair 40 kilos from the car's curb weight. Uh, also intended to optimise efficiency is the slippery body shape, and that's aided by an active radiator grille shutter that closes to aid aerodynamics when cooling isn't needed. If you specify adaptive cruise control, further efficiency gains can be made via a coasting mode, and that's added into the PDK Auto gearbox and it seamlessly disconnects the engine from the transmission at a cruise. A major Macan buying incentive lies with this car's impressively high likely residual values. Uh, when the car was originally launched, buyers were running their cars for 12 months and then selling them on for pretty much uh, what they'd paid for them. It's obviously not quite like that now, but this car still leads its competitors in this regard by a pretty handsome margin. Over three years and 36,000 miles, expect a Macan to hold on to 10 percentage points more of its value than an equivalent Jaguar F-Pace, for example. In Independent experts predict a residual value of 62.6% for this Porsche in that period, which is deeply impressive. On the downside, because of its high upfront asking price, it'll face a higher road tax rate of £450 for the first five years of ownership after the initially CO2 weighted payment, which is rolled into the on the road price. Included as part of the purchase is the usual three-year warranty, although this one laudably doesn't come with any mileage limitations. Now, this package can be extended by either one or two further years on request. Uh, Macan owners also get a three-year breakdown recovery package, uh, a three-year paint warranty, and a 12-year anti-corrosion guarantee. Service intervals, well, they are every 20,000 miles or every two years, whichever comes around soonest. And insurance for the Macan 2-litre is Group 41, and the Macan S is rated at Group 45. Oh, and if you want to justify your purchase of this car to green-minded friends, then it's always useful to know that at the end of its life, it'll be 95% recyclable. Life intensified. According to Porsche, this is what this car is all about. It certainly intensified the whole concept of what an SUV can be. Cars of this kind, even sporting ones, are almost always born out of compromise. They might sometimes look the part, but sheer weight and size have to tell somewhere. Now those issues affect the Macan too, but far less significantly than you might ever have imagined was possible with this class of car. If you need five seats, decent luggage space and go anywhere versatility, but you secretly still crave that little sports car or hot hatch that you used to love so much, we can't think of anything better to recommend as a day-to-day -day choice for someone on a premium budget. This revised model isn't going to convert anyone who didn't already want a Macan, but for the many who'd like one very much indeed, the changes made here make this car even more desirable. Some rivals do have more sophisticated infotainment, and all of them include more camera-driven safety kit as standard. Uh, we would like to have seen diesel power continue to the end of this model generation, and we wish it wasn't so expensive. I mean, realistically, what you're going to be paying here is the kind of money that you'd have to find for a luxury SUV from the next size up. Otherwise though, we like this Porsche very much indeed. This is, in summary, the car all its rivals would like to be, the car that most buyers in this segment would like to have. There are, it's true, more efficient or more spacious choices in the sector. Some premium mid-sized SUVs are better equipped or will take you further off-road, and almost all of them cost slightly less. For all that, though, this is an addictive package. It's a segment-defining car and a very desirable thing indeed. Better equipped or we'll take
take you further off-road, and almost all of them cost slightly less. For all that though, this is an addictive package. It's a segment-defining car, and a very desirable thing indeed.